Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Do your photos from the duck pond look like this and this, but you'd rather they look like this? In this video, I'm gonna teach you the essential wildlife photography tip that most wildlife photographers would agree is the most important tip in taking nice wildlife photos. Rather than going to an exotic location, I'm gonna make this tip accessible by teaching you how to implement it at your local duck pond to show you that you can take great photos close to home. If you stay till the end of the video, I'll teach you an extra secret, which will allow you to take shots like this. My name is Simon D'Entremont, and I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos to give you photo tips or take you behind the scenes for wildlife and nature photography. Subscribe if you wanna see more. One of the most common issues I see out of beginner and intermediate photographers as they start out in wildlife photography is one of perspective. That is the angle from which they take their photos. Often these shots are of the belly of birds as they're looking up at them or the backs of birds as they're looking down at them. There are two issues with these photos. First, the backgrounds, which are part of the photo, aren't pleasing. The ones shot downwards have grass, dirt, or water as a background, which isn't very pleasing. The ones shot upwards have blue or white sky or leaves with bright patches amongst them that draw your eye away from your subject. Secondly, the photos don't have an intimate look, like you're there with the wildlife in the same scene. Rather, they look like they're being documented from a distance. So what's the main culprit here? It's shooting at standing height, especially for birds in the water or on the ground. What's the solution? Getting down low. This does a few things. First, it gets you down at eye level with your subject, which is critical in wildlife photography. Secondly, it makes the background farther away from your subject, making it more out of focus, blurrier, it gives it a more artistic look. Thirdly, your eye level subject pops out against this smooth background, making it look sharper and crisper, even if your lens isn't critically sharp. So how do we get this low angle? My number one tip for bird photography is don't wear your good clothes. This isn't a beauty contest. Technique number one is just getting down flat on your belly, putting your elbows forward and taking some shots from this low angle. This only works well in really flat surfaces or flat surfaces that are very close to the edge of the water. Technique number two is to put your lens and camera very low in front of you and use the back LCD to compose and frame your shots. This can include putting your lens and camera body right on the ground, which works well on sandy beaches, a technique I use to take this photo. Another technique is to use a bean bag or a foam pad, which you put on the ground and rest your lens on top of that, while at the same time composing your shot by looking at the back LCD. As for all these techniques, having a flippy screen or an articulating LCD screen makes it much easier to implement these techniques. Another technique is actually my personal favorite. It works well with really large lenses, and it's the boot technique. That's to stick your foot out with your boot up and laying your heavy lens on top of your boot and then shooting using the back LCD screen. Finally, you can put your camera on a tripod or something like a skimmer ground pod, which is a device like a frying pan that holds your mount and you can slide along the ground very low. Note that when you're buying a tripod for wildlife photography, it's best to buy one without the center stock. That way you can splay the legs out and get your tripod down lower. You can either use a ball head or a gimbal head works great if your lens is very large. Let's talk about the extra challenge of getting focus on your birds when using the back LCD. For usual photography for static birds, you would use a single point and focus it on the head. I find this is a bit too difficult when using the back LCD. I'd rather use several focus points and try to get them anywhere on my bird. Also, if you have eye detect on your camera, this works really great using the back LCD method. Try not to use too many focus points though. If you try too many focus points, often they will focus on the water in front of your bird rather than on your subject. Getting in focus using the back LCD can indeed be a challenge. You can give your camera a head start by pre-focusing on an area close to your subject. It'll make it easier for your camera to focus on your subject if the focus plane is closer to your subject to start off. Once you've got your subject in focus, take lots of shots. That's because you want to capture those special moments of bird behavior, bird movement, interactions between different subjects. These all make great shots if you can capture that special moment. Now let's talk about bird behavior and getting shots like this, which was actually predictable because of the behavior of ducks. And I'm gonna share the secret with you. 
Ducks need to stay waterproof by putting a waxy substance from a gland on their feathers. This is called preening. This is cleaning and arranging the feathers and adding more of this waterproofing substance to their feathers. Now here's the trick. After a preening session, ducks will go through a predictable behavior that will allow you to get some great shots. After preening, birds in water will do one of two things. Number one is they'll do a full body shiver to rearrange their feathers and maybe shake off some extra water. The other behavior is they will dunk their heads and body underwater three or four times, then they will stand up and flap their wings. These are great opportunities for amazing photos. But there are a few things you need to get right. First, you need a lot of shutter speed to freeze this action because it happens quite quickly. 1 1250th of a second or 1 1600th of a second or 1 2000th of a second to freeze this quick action. Second, if the bird is facing you, this usually makes for a better shot, although you can get some great texture of the back feathers when they're looking away from you. Thirdly, try to get the background you want behind the subject. If you want beautiful fall colors, position yourself to have some beautiful fall tree reflections in the background. Or if you want the background blurrier, try to position yourself so the background is more distant behind your subject. So what are the shot opportunities here? Number one, when the duck is preening, there's some great poses and great opportunity to get some beautiful photos of the duck preening, cleaning its feathers. Sometimes you'll get some great wing position and feather positions that make great portraits. Secondly, when the duck is dunking itself and coming up, there's a wonderful opportunity to get water streaming off your subject and off its waterproof feathers. Thirdly, the duck sitting up in the water and flapping its wings gives beautiful wing positions, showing the feather detail, getting that shot while the flapping is taking place is absolutely beautiful. I prefer the wing position fully back or fully forward for the best shots. And fourth, if you're lucky enough to get a backlit situation with a dark background, you can get the water flapping off the duck and off the wings like in this photo right here, one of my favorites. Now, are there exceptions to this advice to get down low for shooting ducks at the duck pond? Of course there are. I've gotten some great photos of ducks coming out of the water by shooting down at them like this wood duck. And I've gotten some beautiful photos where the reflection in the water that I was able to get by shooting down on it was part of the photo and added to the photo. So don't be afraid to experiment with your angle of view. And I said, if you stayed to the end, I'd give you an extra tip. And that's my favorite effect. That's when your subject is in the shade, but the background is in the sun. This is accomplished by the sun setting behind you, maybe behind some trees where you and your subject are in the shade, but the background is fully lit. It makes a beautiful magical effect where your subject has no shadows, is evenly illuminated, but the background is very bright and very colorful. Because the background is very bright compared to your subject, be careful not to blow out and overexpose the background. Your subject may be underexposed in the original photo, but through processing, you can raise the shadows darken the highlights in the background and get a beautiful photo that comes out looking like this. If you enjoyed this content, give me a like and YouTube will show it to other people. Go out there and take some amazing photos. I know you can do it.